The west side of Los Angeles is commonly referred to as the area located west of the 405, west of Beverly Hills, pretty much directly in the heart of the city where everything's happening, the place that you see in the movies, beautiful Santa Monica and Venice Beach. It's where everyone wants to live when they initially move out to LA before they experience anything. That's what you think about. You think of the west side. There are lots of different areas to live on the west side in Los Angeles. In this video, I'm giving you a map tour of all the little locations, different areas to show you what it could be like if you're thinking about living on the west side. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Darren Kriz. I have a real estate team helping people buy, sell, and invest in property here in LA every single day. So if that's you, reach out to me. My email is down in the description below. But let me show you some of what the west side here has to offer. If you take a look at the map, we have downtown LA right here, and then boom, Beverly Hills. We're gonna focus on everything west of Beverly Hills, primarily west of the 405 freeway. 405 freeway, probably the most congested freeway in all of Los Angeles, especially if you are commuting south in the mornings, uh, going to LAX, not very fun. Um, right here, so West Los Angeles. This is pretty much in the heart of the west side. It's gonna be very congested with traffic right where you see Wilshire, Santa Monica, Sawtell. And so first off, we have Century City right here where you have the Westfield Century City Mall, one of the biggest outdoor malls in all of Los Angeles. It's, it's got a great shopping center. It's got an AMC movie theater. It pretty much has, pretty much has everything you'd want in a large outdoor mall. Then you have Westwood. So Westwood, that's where UCLA is located, pretty much along Westwood. It's known for the Wilshire Corridor. It's known for being right next to Bel Air. This is Bel Air Country Club. So it's a great place to live. You know, if you're a student going to UCLA or USC, I mean, UCLA is in pretty much, it's night and day, the kind of neighborhoods that UCLA and USC are in. UCLA is right next to Bel Air and Beverly Hills, whereas USC is uh, all the way out here, pretty much in the South Los Angeles, South Central LA, not the greatest area. You might want to avoid that unless you are a student at USC. So keep on, keep it on going here. Rancho Park, Rancho Park, lots of nice single family homes above Rancho Park golf course right here. Just south of Rancho Park, you have Cheviot Hills where it's a very hilly streets. I have a few videos of me driving through the streets of Cheviot Hills. Some of those homes could range up to $10 million. Very nice neighborhoods. And I talk a lot about that in other videos. So if you want to know more about Cheviot Hills, check out my channel. And as we keep going, West Los Angeles is technically its own little neighborhood in itself here in LA where there is, there's a Best Buy, Equinox, there's pretty much everything. It's right next to Sawtell where you have Sushi Row, a lot of new apartment buildings um, right along this part of Sawtell west of the 405 freeway. Check this out, Sushi Row, you have them all. If you're a big sushi fan, I recommend you going down here, checking it out. You can walk to all these different shops. Well, my favorite burrito actually in LA is in Sawtell as well. But they're moving. They just told me that they're moving. It's uh, Sonoritas. You get the, uh, uh, the shoot, it's the steak and shrimp burrito. It's unbelievable. I am just salivating thinking of it right now. But that's in Sawtell as well. Just north of Sawtell is Brentwood. I would consider Sawtell and Brentwood almost one and the same, except Brentwood is a little more expensive than Sawtell. Brentwood, if you keep going north of Brentwood, you get some of the more expensive homes, more moderns, brand new builds, single family homes. But if you zoom in on Brentwood, you can see a lot of apartment buildings closer to the 405 freeway around University High School right here. You got some luxury apartment buildings. And then you have Brentwood Country Club right there. But then more single family homes you see in these darker areas as well. Brentwood Park, very expensive. And as we keep going west, you make your way to the Pacific Palisades, where it is pretty much its own city in itself. The Palisades Village, great place to live all around the Palisades. Seven different neighborhoods out there. Got tons of videos about the Palisades. North of Montana. Now, this is a great neighborhood. A lot of young people like to live in, even though it's very hard to find a, a good place that will come on the market in north of Montana because... They're usually kept secrets, whether you're trying to rent or buy. They don't come on the market too often, but it's right between Palisades and Santa Monica. So I know a lot of people that are always looking in that area north of Montana. Let me know if you have any questions about that area. It's it's uh, kind of a hidden gem out here in L.A. But as we keep going down, mid-city Santa Monica, it's, uh, you know, it's, 
It's the inland portion of Santa Monica, a little bit cheaper than if you're living toward Wilshire, Montana. Now, Wilshire, Montana, another great area as we make our way down to downtown Santa Monica. This is the heart of the tourists. You got Third Street where you'll see uh, it's the outdoor shopping center, just a walking street there in Santa Monica. You can walk all along Third Street, go to your favorite restaurants, uh, shopping places, and it will connect you right to another mall as well at the very end. And also, it connects you to the pier. So you go from Third Street, walk to the pier. You're going to see tourists there all day, every day. But if you like Santa Monica... I would highly recommend you check out Ocean Park, which is just south, and that is mainly a more, more for the locals. Ocean Park consists of Main Street, where you can see all the local pubs, smaller bars, great place for young people on the weekends. The more lively part of Santa Monica to avoid the touristy areas. Um, a lot of nice bars along the beach as well, a lot of Great area to walk. Less people down here in the southern portion of the pier than if you keep going north. But as we keep going south, we arrive to Oakwood right between Venice and Ocean Park and then Venice. There's Venice. Obviously, touristy portion of Venice would be right around the Venice sign. You can see the Venice sign, which if you walk underneath the Venice, I'm sure you've seen the Venice sign. But that leads you right to the Venice Skate Park right there. You got Muscle Beach. You got the Venice basketball courts, tennis courts. This is what you see in all those movies when people are going to the beach in Los Angeles. They're seeing Venice. They're seeing the Venice Boardwalk. But if you're a local, you probably don't go to the boardwalk too often. You might go to some of these restaurants in the area, some great ones. I mean, Ospi, amazing Italian restaurant right across from Planches Tacos. But then Bell's Beach House, super popular these days. Great drinks, amazing cocktails there. Also, Great White. and I've heard people say Great White has their favorite breakfast burritos in all of L.A., not just in Venice. So I haven't even tried it yet. I'm a breakfast burrito connoisseur. I'm going to have to go to Great White eventually. But you can see many shops, ice cream spots right along Oceanfront Walk, and then this roundabout right here. Not too much usually happen over there. Closer to the beach, more is happening around here in Venice. Very congested area. And these are all pretty much single-family homes up above and above Abbott Kinney. Abbott Kinney Boulevard running right through Venice diagonally here, which is also um, pretty much I would kind of compare it to the local area too of Venice even though a lot of tourists are obviously going to be walking along here, but it's it's uh, it's got a bunch of coffee shops, cafes, ice cream, a couple places to shop as well, some boutique restaurants. It reminds me of Melrose, but kind of more of an upscale, nicer version of Melrose right there in Venice. And as we keep going south, look at that. The Venice Canals. I know people that have lived in L.A. for decades and have never been to the Venice Canals. I mean... These homes are amazing. I have some, I have a house tour that I posted a couple months ago on my other channel of a home right on the Venice Canals. It just feels like you're in another world. It feels like you're actually in Venice, Italy. You got the white bridges running through the rivers. You've got amazing views. Uh, just nothing really like it. And those homes, you can rent them out as an Airbnb. I know people that do that. Or you can just purchase one for five to nine million on the upper end for the brand new homes. Uh, you can find something a little lower than that, but still, if you want a nicer one, Venice Canals, not too many homes around there, but definitely check it out if you're in the area. Then that's also walking distance to Marina del Rey. Look at that. One block away from the canals, you got the Venice Pier, which is kind of a... It's you not as touristy as any of the other piers. There's usually nobody on this pier, but it's massive. It extends a very long length. Bring a dog, bring your date, whatever you need. But this part of Venice is also a good bar, local local pubs, local bars with the Hanano. That's a bar, Venice Whaler, another uh, nice spot to uh, enjoy a drink on the weekends or have dinner. And just right here, right on Washington, just some parking right here. Easily can walk around and do some uh, restaurant hopping around there. As you keep going north, there are some nice brunch spots going north as you arrive to Marina del Rey. So Marina del Rey, this is it. The giant body of water in Marina del Rey. That's the marina where everyone is docking their yachts, docking their boats. You've got everything you'd need in Marina del Rey. It's more of a, you've got high-rise apartment and condo buildings. It's definitely more upscale than Venice. You're going to see a lot less uh, 
It's, it's cleaner as well in Marina del Rey. Lots of luxury hotels such as right here, the Courtyard Marriott, and they all have incredible views of, of everything, of the water just in general, amazing views around there in Marina. And then you got Culver. So we're going to Culver City areas as we go inland. So going inland, Culver West, Cypress Grove, Del Rey. This is all very similar area. Uh, I would say it's a little more uh, lower end neighborhoods than you would see in inland Santa Monica. But still, great bang for your buck. New build apartment buildings around there. You can get a much better deal. You're very close to Marina Del Rey. You can walk there. I know a lot of people in their 20s and 30s living in these areas because you pretty much can do everything you'd want to do living on the west side. Look at all these local local mom and pop spots is what you're going to be finding there. Mom and pop cafes, mom and pop restaurants, you know, probably the better burritos, the better food spots. I should probably try a little bit more down here in Culver West. Lodge bread, Samosa House, Ruts Hawaiian, and then a jack-in-the-box. You got to always have your jack-in-the-boxes. But right here on Venice Boulevard, that cuts through Mar Vista. And Mar Vista is mainly comprised of single-family homes, a little more expensive. You got new builds. Mar Vista is kind of its own hit, uh, community in itself. There's a little league, more families in Mar Vista than you'd see in Culver West, Cypress Grove, younger neighborhoods down beneath Mar Vista Houses. And that's all along the Santa Monica Airport as well. I do have a driving tour of Mar Vista if you also want to check out my channel for other videos about Mar Vista in general. And then Penmar Golf Course, great golf course. I've talked about this a bunch, but on Wednesdays during the summer, Wine Wednesdays at the Penmar Golf Course, great place to meet people, great place to bring your dog, enjoy live music. It's a great spot during the summer on Wednesdays. I know a lot of people look forward to that. Uh, you know, Playa Vista, Westchester, just a couple northern areas of Del Rey. A lot of students live around here, Playa Del Rey, because you have Loyola Marymount University, LMU, right between all these. Westchester, more so family neighborhoods, single family homes, but so many apartment buildings in Playa Vista, Playa Del Rey. Uh, it's obviously not going to be cheap down here in Playa Del Rey because you are steps from the ocean. But then you have LAX, and that's where we cut off from the west side. El Segundo, I mean, all I want to say about that is uh, Top Golf. They built the brand new Top Golf there in El Segundo, so it's pretty fun. If you guys haven't ventured down there to El Segundo for Top Golf, definitely recommend you try to do that. And as you keep going north here, Culver City, Washington Culver, Tito's Tacos, extremely popular and famous taco spot in Los Angeles. No matter what time of day you go, it's going to be a long line. So make sure you are in for at least an hour wait if you want to get some good tacos in LA. Washington Culver, Carlson Park, all these areas right here in East Culver City. Not the greatest. If you like Culver City, I would suggest these areas. Carlson Park's a good area. And then over here, it's a little, uh, it's great. Culver City, great area. I know a lot of people love living in Culver City as well as Palms, which is a little, is like lower end Culver City. But I would suggest, I would say Palms and Culver, almost one in the same when you're talking about this portion right here. Uh, Culver City just has everything you'd want in an area. It's a little bit less expensive. The downtown has all of your favorite, there's just a row where you can pretty much go to any cafe, any restaurant you'd want any local bar. You have the Culver Steps, which is a great spot. I know a lot of people doing work there. Uh, there's the Equinox right there at One Culver and also at One Culver, which is this big building right here. You'll It's a one of the nicest buildings in all of LA. You walk into the building, you'll just be in awe and not even understand how something like this could be built right there in Culver City. But what Culver City is mainly known for having is uh, Sony Pictures Studios right there. Sony Entertainment is right in the heart of Culver. You'll definitely see it if you're driving anywhere down Washington or Culver Boulevard right there. Westdale is, uh, there's single family homes, um, apartment buildings as well. You pretty much got a whole mix. It's pretty similar to what Palms is like, I would say. A little bit more um, crime in Westdale than in Palms if you look at the statistics, but still good areas overall. I mean, no matter where you're going to be living, there's going to be some sorts of flaws, some sorts of crime. There's going to be pros and cons to every individual neighborhood throughout the entire West Side. But I think I covered it in whatever 15 minutes that was or so. I covered everything I wanted to just briefly talk about every single neighborhood here on the West Side. I know LA 
like the back of my hand pretty much guys if you have any questions at all about anything in regards to real estate in regards to buying a house renting a place or living in los angeles in general feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel or shoot me an email down in the description below my team and i are happy to help let me know if you have any questions at all about any individual neighborhood appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you on the next one hit the subscribe button also peace